Hello, my name is Daniel Montano. I'm from Romania. I teach at the moment uh, theology at the University of Bamberg in Germany. And I'm also associate professor at the University of Wallachia from Târgoviște, Romania. Um, first of all, I would like to express my deepest consideration and to thank Professor Verica for his kind invitation to this important and challenging conference. I'm very grateful to the Templeton Foundation for making me to, uh, 2007 a theological promise. Uh, doc, Dr. Murray mentioned in his speech uh, that the Templeton Foundation is a foundation that seeks to transform lives and cultures. I like to confirm his short definition because the Templeton Foundation really has changed my life too, my worldview, thanks to the unique possibilities of giving lecture in different countries, for instance, England, Finland, uh, Russia, Australia, I saw there for the first time live uh, kangaroos and koalas, <laughs> uh, South Africa and United States. The title of my presentation is The Divine Fire in All Things, Orthodox Cosmology in Dialogue with Science. In this short paper, I would like to present some reflection regarding the theology and science dialogue and to put up for discussions my ideas regarding the meaning of the perihoretical worldview as paradigmatic contribution to this dialogue. I will also try to show how the divine fire, that means uh, the divine immanence in all things, might be connected with information, that means with the informed universe. And these are the topics uh, that I would like to focus on. The first one, fire as cosmic reality and as a metaphor for divine presence. In the history of mankind, fire played always a significant role. Throughout the centuries, there has been such an intimate connection of fire with the cultural growth of humanity, so that the theological analysis of fire could give some insights on the fundamental relevance, not only in the tracing the history of human evolution, but also in the dialogue of theology with science. Without the ability to control fire, the evolution of the human being such as it was would be inconceivable. Fire was an essential survival tool for humans. This metaphor of fire, a source of energy and starting point of dynamic complexity, might be used both for explanation of Big Bang and for expansion of the universe. 30.7 billion years ago, the very early universe was highly energetic and for a while transformation took place with breathtaking rapidity, underlined Sir John Polkinghorn. For several hundred thousand more years, the universe was a kind of cosmic plasma. Our physical world is an evolving complex and dynamic system from its elementary particles to the, to the observable limits of the galactic cluster. Nothing remains stationary in nature. Everything is in perpetual changing motion and uh, transformation. Uh, now um, I, I came from Romania and I have an orthodox background. And uh, please uh, consider this uh, presentation as a footnote to the wonderful and fantastic lectures that I was able to share with uh, here. And um, I'd like to focus now on the meaning of the orthodox uh, spirituality in this uh, metaphor of light. Maximus Confessor, one of the greatest church fathers, used the metaphor of fire in order to describe the divine presence at the heart of all being. According to him, there is a divine fire in all things. The ineffable, supernatural, and divine fire is present as in a burning bush in the being of everything that exists. This is an image both for the divine immanence in the world and for the salvation of the universe through the uncreated light of God as well. In the seventh uh, century, Maximus Confessor was the first theologian to introduce in Christology the concept of perichoresis as mutual indwelling of divine and human nature in Christ. Prior to him in the fifth century, 
Kirill of Alexandria compared the effect of incarnation with the transformation of the iron through an intense fire. The incandescent iron participates in the power of fire. For Maximus Confessor, incandescent iron is a picture of the transformative power of love. Each movement of love is perihoretical, like the air that becomes enlightened by light, and like the iron that becomes completely incandescent by fire. One could uh, speak uh, about the ecumenical character of fire as irradiance of divine, creative, and sustainable light. One of the most impressive radiance of light is to be found in the event of transfiguration of the Lord on Mount Tabor. Jesus Christ irradiated or revelated the uncreated light of God as mystery of divine presence in the cosmic matter so that Peter wished he could stay there forever. This divine fire in all things is correlated with divine beauty that overcomes boundaries Crossing boundaries belongs to the essence of the beautiful. The divine fire is divine and dynamical beauty of the Trinitarian perichoresis of love, inflames desire, drawing one on into an endless epectasis, a stretching out toward an ever greater embrace with divine glory. God is light, and every good gift comes from the Father of, the, of lights. So I I like to present you also. This is a a, a, a a picture from an old Romanian church from the 18th century in Bucharest, and I discovered this uh, during a conference there. And um, I have uh, I'd like to share with you three icons of uh, Trinity, so that you might uh, understand the, the Orthodox tradition is iconic, but also. Uh, through the epophetic theology iconoclastic. That means uh, the icons are not the ultimate reality, but a way to explain the beauty of the divine. The second one is from the <coughs> Theophan the Greek, and this uh, fresco was inspiring for Rubliov, who painted this classic uh, icon of the Trinity. So you can see there not only the dove, but also uh, the person of the Holy Spirit as, uh, as uh, a real person in the communion and communication of, uh, of, of this uh, transforming uh, uh, love. This incomprehensible splendor of the divine light and beauty of the Trinitarian creator remains the gravitational center of all these desires. Just as the sun is itself the most beautiful of all things visible, just so is God himself the highest of all objects of thought, in whom every desire finds its limit beyond which it cannot pass, said Gregory of Nazianzus. Now I'll go to the second point, Trinitarian paradigm of communion and communication. The Trinitarian understanding of the world as created by the Father through the Son and the Holy Spirit allows us to see everything marked by the wisdom of the divine world and by the energetical presence of the Holy Spirit. The eternal and historical realities are fundamentally encoded with this matrix of communication, communion and communication. Also the biological existence depends on exchange of information. The dance of life in a biological cell involves a complex and dynamic rationality sustained by continual interactions between enzymes and proteins in processes of great intricacy, said John Polkinghorn. Maximus Confesso had the intuition of the fundamental char character of reality confirmed nowadays in physical science. There is a holistic connectivity in the physical world that cannot be explained without by a purely atomistic view of the world. According to John Polkinghorn, it is not possible to describe the world of subatomic physics atomistically. Nature is intrinsically relational. Due to this intrinsic rationality, democratic atomism is definitely dead. The, this rational ontology of the world is based, in my opinion, on a Trinitarian relationship, on this uh, perihoretical 
exchange of mutuality and interpenetrating love between the three divine persons. The third point is um, a quote from Dumitru Staniloi, one of the major interpreters of Maximus Confessor. He said, as its base, everything that is, is light. Cosmic light is expression of Trinitarian love. Dumitru Saniloi understood the divine fire in all things as creative irradiance of God's love. Creation exists because the Trinitarian God, a supreme structure of love, wishes to share his overwhelming plenitude and fullness of existence with mankind. According to Staniloi, love puts omnipotence in motion. The entire Holy Trinity is at work in creation, salvation, and sanctification. I'll switch a bit, I'll short a bit my paper. Um, two minutes, sorry. Uh, two minutes for 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Staniloi focused on the meaning of Trinitarian intersubjectivity, uh, where love is, there is also meaning. So the ultimate reality is uh, meaningful, and um, uh, for uh, uh, Staniloi, through re reason means also uh, a reason of love and communion and communication. Um, I have here some more picture to illustrate the meaning of uh, intersubjectivity and interpersonal communion, the human being as uh, logos, zoon, logon, echon, in connecting with the uh, uh, logos, the supreme, uh, supreme logos. This is uh, an influenced um, uh, Byzantine mosaic from San Marco, and uh, I have also, I'm also uh, fascinated by the beauty of the universe, and uh, I think that this light and this uh, beauty, transformative beauty, is an invitation to uh, communion with our Creator. I have uh, another point here, the fi fire and creation as medium of divine revelation. In the Old Testament, uh, you can find all uh, theophany of God as lightning events. Uh, this holiness and this splendor um, is uh, 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 God speaks to his uh, uh, people and to Moses on the, bear, uh, on the mountain uh, in, in a flame of fire out of the mist of the bush, out of the mist of the fire. And um, for the Orthodox uh, spirituality, uh, we can describe the Orthodox uh, tradition and Orthodox spirituality as an, uh, a spirituality of life and, and of light. Um, in uh, the theology of baptism, we have Irenaeus of Lyon. He said, uh, uh, Christ came into the world in order that we might receive his spirit and to embrace uh, the Father. So through the light of love, we can participate in the divine uh, uh, perichoresis of love. Uh, fundamentally for the Orthodox spirituality is this uh, icon of transfiguration Jesus Christ is light, light from light, phos ek photon, uh, and uh, this uh, irradiating light uh, may be uh, found uh, later in the event of Pentecost when, when the Holy Spirit uh, uh, came uh, as flame of, uh, of love and flame of fire. He is also, uh, the Holy Spirit is described in the Orthodox liturgy as fire that proceeds from fire. Uh, we can, you can uh, find this metaphor of burning bush of divine fire uh, also in the theology of Maximus uh, Confessor uh, who uh, developed uh, a theology of uh, light. I discovered uh, an important link to, to, the, uh, to, to, to science, uh, a fascinating image about the cosmic fire in every living being can be found in John Porkinghorne's description of the stellar nucleogenesis. I quote, every atom of carbon in every living being was once inside the star, since the interior nuclear uh, furnace of the stars are the only place in the universe where this element can be made. Uh, the uh, next point, fire, a symbol of intrinsic rationality and dynamic complexity of the universe. Uh, and uh, at uh, the end, uh, please let me finish with uh, some uh, remarks. So you can see a lot of light uh, and uh, uh, light in the Orthodox tradition. And this light, interesting, is connected also with the light of resurrection. You see there, 
Jesus Christ in a sort of sphere, of eternal sphere, and you can find here the connection between time and eternity, and uh, this is also in the theology of resurrection, to participate uh, uh, according to the present eschatology, to participate here and now in the eternal life. Um, I will finish my presentation with the criteria for theology and science, some criteria for theology and science uh, dialogue, um, and um, I will only read them. The common sphere of the one intelligible world. The second point, pneumatological dimension of knowledge and being. The third one, fragmentarity of knowledge and relativity of paradigms. Culture of kenosis and humility. The fifth one, recognition of the gnostic intellect. The sixth, uh, sixth one, divine intentionality of communion in the universe. The th seventh one, hermeneutics of complementarity. Creative love is participation in divine creativity. I will also like to underline the ecological task of uh, interdisciplinarity in this eco-theology as public theology. Um, passion for the breathtaking complexity of the world. And science and theology discourse as contribution to the welfare of future generation. I just noticed that I forgot the last one, and please let me finish with uh, dear Dr. Templeton. Please allow me to finish my presentation with the words of your father, very inspiring. Ima gerade aus towards the ultimate reality that embraces us in the present. Many thanks for your attention.